Welcome to Success Story, the most useful podcast in the world. I'm your host, Scott D. Clary. The Success Story podcast is part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network, as well as the HubSpot Podcast Network. The HubSpot Podcast Network has other great podcasts like Marketing Made Simple, hosted by Dr. J.J. Peterson. Now, Marketing Made Simple brings you practical tips to make your marketing easy and, more importantly, make it work. If you like any of these topics, you definitely want to go check out the show, how to write and deliver a captivating speech, how to market yourself into a new job, how design can help and also hurt your revenue, creating a social media ad strategy that actually works. If these topics resonate with you, go check out Marketing Made Simple wherever you get your podcasts. Today, my guest is Kurt Sowers. Kurt is the president and founder of Soco Group. Now, Soco Group is a general contracting firm that offers design and build services specific to commercial upfit and interiors. Now, Mr. Sowers currently holds his general contractor's license in the state of North Carolina and has set sight on expanding his licensing across the southeastern states. Prior to starting Soco Group, Kurt worked professionally in the construction industry as a construction manager and project superintendent. During his tenure in the industry, Kurt has directly overseen $25 million of new construction. Now, although building could be considered the embodiment of his persona, Kurt's entrepreneurial aspirations are not limited to construction. Kurt is currently creating the fashion brand Van Owers with his aesthetically inspired and long-term friend, William. Additionally, Kurt continues to pave the road for passion projects in the entertainment industry and has an overarching theme and vision for this platform. So we spoke about a variety of different topics. We spoke about the world of construction and development, something that Kurt is incredibly passionate about. We spoke about the steps an entrepreneur should take when starting a company from scratch. We spoke about how to make the move from solopreneur to business owner, how to hire, how to train, how to find the best talent, how to make yourself redundant. Uh, We spoke about managing work, life, professional, personal, public spotlight, and then we spoke about how to leverage your personal brand for business success. So a lot of personal branding, uh, a lot of personal branding lessons, a lot of entrepreneurial lessons, a lot of business owner lessons. Of course, Kurt is in construction, but the lessons that you can learn from his journey are applicable to any industry, any category. I hope you enjoy. Bringing it back. So I guess I kind of have this ideology or this uh, idea that I think people should, you should do what you were inspired to do as a, as a kid, as a child, right? So, it, and it sounds dumb, but for me, I uh, I love Legos. I love building shit. I love Legos. <laughs> right? So I was just like, all right, well. And then uh, in my teenage years and then in college, I worked as a handyman. I built furniture. I worked in and out of almost every trade in the construction industry. And it was it was always what kind of came natural to me. I was good at it. So, um, you know, then I veered away from that for, for a little while. And then in college, too, I studied studied construction management, civil engineering technology. So, you know, very, very, very educated on the science of construction. Um, but I definitely, you know, I steered away from it. And I wanted to be like, I always thought I was like, oh, I'll be a be a businessman as a kid. I didn't know what a businessman was right and then as I got older um I realized I was like this is the only thing you're actually like really good at and and are inspired by I get inspired by construction and um and the industry in itself um so that's kind of why you know I have stuck with it I guess so so yeah you you have these like aspirations as a kid and you have some idea of like well actually Mm -hmm. like what lights a fire yeah but uh, I think that a lot of people, like when they're coming at so so walk me through, like even like in high school, like when did you start working in this? When did you start figuring like, shit, like I'm actually good at this? Or is this something that you wanted to test out? Was it like high school? Was it college? Like what point? Yeah, it was college, just out of necessity. I mean, I put myself through college. So I was working at a car wash and then um, a friend of my dad was a, a handyman, had a handyman business. So I apprenticed him pretty much all through college. Um, and that's where I kind of cut my teeth as far as working in different trades, um, cause we did it all mechanical, electrical, plumbing, framing, carpentry, you know, so I kind of dip my uh, hands in, in all the different, uh, divisions of construction. Um, and I just kind of had a knack for it. And, and like I said, I enjoyed it. So from there, um, I was doing, uh, in college, I was studying business and I was a terrible student, <laughs> like terrible student. So I decided, 
It's like, all right, let's change pace. And I, I switched over to construction management. And I found that I actually enjoyed learning about that. Um, so that's kind of what, what propelled me, I think, into this direction. And then, like, what, like, what does construction management mean? Um, yeah, broad term, right? But yeah. construction management, uh, construction is actually a very, it's a very scientific industry. Um, and you, you, you cover a lot of different um, topics and disciplines. And uh, so construction management teaches you about the different divisions, gives you a little bit of um, background uh, in, you know, structural engineering and kind of the, you know, the components that go into construction or, or yeah. into building. Um, and then as far as the, the management side of it, which I'm terrible at, to be honest, like when I was working, um, I worked for a GC for years and, uh, I was a construction manager at first. I was terrible at it. I'm a terrible project manager, but what I found that I was really good at, then I moved into a site superintendent. I was a great superintendent because that was when I was in the field, running the crews, getting shit built, you know, hands on. Um, so that's when I really started to, I think, excel in the industry when I became a, uh, site superintendent. But like when you're, if you're a site super, like mm -hmm. that's still like, if you start your own business, like then you have to figure out the business side of yeah. it, which is like, a, it's a motherfucker. Like it's not easy. Right. So that's why I think yeah. a lot of people get stuck. Mm -hmm. And when people try, like they're passionate about something and they start and they want to start something and they want to figure out a way to, they're working for something like, and they're like, oh yeah. yeah, I could totally do that, no problem. I could do what like my boss's boss's boss or the mm. founder of the company could do, and they try it, and it's like not so yeah. easy. And no, that's... it's it's not at all. It's it's uh, I'm a t I, I mean, I was just telling my friends earlier, I'm a I'm a terrible businessman, but what I am good at, I'm good at building, yeah, uh, and I'm good at the relationship side of it. So I'm good at getting people to. Uh, trust me <laughs> to contract with me. Yeah. However, the business side is I'm I'm definitely still working through that right now, and that is it's, you know, it's tough, tough figuring out the the business side of things. I mean, the back of house, keeping up with all your paperwork. Uh, there's a ton of paperwork that goes into construction. So, so you, if you start, okay, say you, so you want to start into your own business in construction. Mm -hmm. So, like traditional entrepreneur, I'm just thinking like you can bootstrap this, you build your yeah. own company with the money you saved up or you go raise money. So what yeah. did you do to like actually start your own company? <laughs> I had nowhere near enough money to start my own company. It, it was kind of, I, I started my company out of- Wait, how um, much money, okay, how much money were you making as a GC? Like before you pivoted. So like yeah. you're still working for somebody. How yeah. much money can you make there? I was making uh, about 95 okay. as a superintendent for, for a commercial GC. Okay, cool. So I was making good money um, and then- when the pandemic started, actually, I, uh, I I'd been thinking about branching out on my own. Okay, so it was all right. It was in, it was in my back of my head. I'd been working at that point as a superintendent for, you know, like six plus years. You know, gained a lot of experience. I I knew that I was. I mean, a site superintendent is probably the most important person on a job. They're the one who 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 gets shit done, right? So I knew that my skill set that I could take that. Um, and be successful at it if I, if I wanted to on my own. So when the pandemic hit, uh, I was working for a company and they uh, asked to furlough me. Uh, we were doing like commercial tire centers. They did a lot of fast food restaurants. So all their contracts dried up right when the pandemic hit. And I was like, oh. they asked to furlough me. And I was like, man, this is, it was like the kick I needed, right? Yeah, yeah. But I only had, embarrassing to say like how much i only had like 15k in the bank Shit. to start yeah yeah to start my own of, of like li liquid cash to start my own company and that's including like your rent and your food like cost of living yeah yeah, yeah 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 so i've just and i just dug in and did it and uh i don't know how but everything worked out it was it, the relationships i had built throughout the years of being a super yeah um it was easy i reached out to people i had built for developers and stuff when i was working for other gcs and everybody was like everybody fed me work. Everybody was happy to work with me. I was like, hey, look, just getting started. You know, I'll do a little bit cheaper, this, that. And yeah, I mean, I didn't really need or want anything for that first year. I had plenty of business. So. And so like when you first started on your own, like what are the jobs you're taking? You're doing the jobs like yourself? Uh, no, no. I, so I'm, I'm a true general contractor. So yeah. I subcontract out everything. I don't self-perform anything. I, I, um, I have supervision on it and I might do a little bit of handyman stuff at the end of a project, like touch up yeah. and stuff, but no. So I, I, uh, so construction is broken out across 52 different divisions and you have fifty two, yeah, for, for larger scale. So okay. what, what I'm doing now, I'm mainly doing commercial interiors. So I'm only dealing with 
you know, maybe 12 different divisions, if that. I mean, usually I have about seven or eight subcontractors on a job. Um, so I subcontract out every component um, of the job to different subcontractors. And then I manage them, you know, scope them out, uh, supervise them, um, and take it to the finish line. Yeah, but so if you're doing this, like you're trying to, so when you find your next project, like what are the things that you were thinking about when you first started? Like to find your first project. So what I'm trying to do is trying to like take like the, the experience that you have and yeah. then somebody's like in this field right now. Yeah. What's the first action item they do? Like the first month, are you reaching out to all your, you're reaching out to all your contacts? Yeah. Are you, are you like, is there no issue with you taking business away from like the people that you, you already knew? Well, that was just it. That, it <laughs> I said I, w I wasn't taking business away from the people yeah. I was working for because they were, they were much larger. So when I started off, I was just doing little renovations and additions, residential stuff. Yeah. As I was trying to formulate my plan of like, what kind of general contractor do I want to be? Um, and that took me a while to figure out. Yeah. I, at first I was like, well, maybe I can. So rewind a little bit. When I had first became a super, I was building townhouses. So I had built um, 20 different townhouses in and around Charlotte. Um, I'd gotten pretty good at that. So when I branched out on my own, and, and then from that, I moved into commercial as a super, which I love. I love the commercial side, but it takes a lot of bankroll to, to run a commercial yeah, I want to general out that contractor. Piece too, like raising money and shit. Yeah. You got to figure all that. Okay. It's just, I mean, honestly, it's a, we can get to that, but it's, a, it's just a balancing act. It's, you know, you are a GC at times, you act as a bank. So it's, it's billing ahead to the owner. And then you get that money and then that money passes straight through the, to the subcontractor. And then, you know, you make your margin on top. But a lot of times, I mean, I won't pay myself till the end of a project just because I got to keep, you know, enough money in the account to keep the jobs flowing. So, um, but anyhow, back up. So when I was a, a super uh, building townhomes, that's what I thought initially when I started my company. I was like, well, I'll just do residential. No, I learned my lesson quick that residential, it's, it's so personal for the client. You know, they're, they're, they're living in that house. They have a timeline that they have to meet. The budget is always dicey. You know, they're always trying to cut corners, save money. It just, it's a headache, uh, especially the way I'm set up um, to, to try to run a residential general contracting company, at least as a small company, yeah. right? Um, so then after doing a couple of residential jobs that first year, uh, I decided that I'm going to focus on just commercial interiors. Um, no... Nothing structural. If I can avoid structural, I will yeah, just for liability. That, explain what that means. Like so, commercial interiors, commercial outfits. So yeah. you have a lot of developers, um, especially in a city like Charlotte, very new city, right? So developers come in, they'll build, build strip malls or they'll build skyscrapers, and that's it. They usually just do the shell, and then different GCs because because then they're leasing those spaces out, right? So whoever they lease it out through a restaurant or an office, whatever, then they bring in their GC to do the outfit. So that's that's the that's the market that I'm targeting right now. Just commercial interiors, commercial outfits, because I just think it's a it's a it's a reliable business model, and it also it's it's what I can handle right now as building a small business. You yeah. know, with with minimizing my risk and liability. Because if you go into one of these places, like so, like even like the cash flow you're just describing, yeah. like you don't have a lot of margin for error. Like you have a lot of room for error on these mm -hmm. deals. So like you're selling the service, you're selling yourself, you close the deal, yeah. you have to subcontract all these other subcontractors, you have to bring yeah. them into the deal, they finish the work. I'm assuming when you're first starting out, you can't work on that many projects. No, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got four right now and I'm stretched thin. <laughs> yeah, so, it's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. And then like when you're, when you're doing this stuff, like you're a small business owner at this point, like what's the what's the what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? How do you mitigate or protect against that when you're trying to do these jobs? So the worst thing in in, in general contracting is the the estimating the initial project cost. There's no there's no science to it. I mean, there's a bit of a science to it, right? The way you estimate is you you break everything down into the smallest margin possible or the smallest unit possible, and then you apply a, a price point to it. And then you build out your estimate, you know, so say for, for flooring or paint, you break out flooring into, you know, square foot, and then you can apply a, a X per square foot or per brick, you break it out per brick. So it's, it is, it is a bit of a science. However, it's never accurate because you always have um, incidentals and or the cost of materials, as you probably know, is just well, fluctuating gonna, so constantly. I was going to ask you, like, 
this is like not even where we're at right now, but yeah. I was gonna talk about like COVID and supply chain yeah. and like the shit show that the yeah. world's just gone through and how you navigated that. Mm. Because like, we'll, we'll keep finishing your thought, but like yeah. not only did you like start, you had 15,000 bucks. Yeah. You started a business. It's like the worst time to ever start the a business. The worst time. <laughs> Nobody even wants to like, like forget like you're trying to like be like a, a GC in like mm. all these like little residential areas to start. Yeah. Like nobody wants you even walking into their home. Yeah. Probably let alone. I know. So you can figure out how it's, you manage that. But yeah. It, it really, the, the only, it, even if you want to call it, I don't even consider myself su successful. Yeah. I mean, I guess I built a business out of, out of nothing, but as far as the monetary side, I'm only now becoming successful, but where I found success that first year was completely dependent on um, the relationships I had built. I'm a good, like, I'm a relationship guy. That's a lesson right there. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, like, if, if I see value in, in a relationship, or even if I don't, I, 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 I treat people very well, I respect people, and I try to, if I do see potential value in a, in a person or relationship, I definitely make it a point to follow up on that relationship, you know, to just, just keep up with that person, uh, or that business and just, you know, establish some sort of, of relationship. And, and because of that, because of, I guess my way with people that, that led me to be able to be successful or, or, or at least to be able to keep business coming in. Yeah. So, okay. So you had business coming in, but you also had to deal with like mass, like the problems you dealt with when you were starting this when problems that like a GC two years ago would not have had. Yeah. So you have supply chain issues, yeah. which uh, impacts your project time, yeah. like time to completion. You have like tons of like all these costs associated. Yeah. So like the first deal you worked on or the first few, what was the, like the absolute worst shit that happened that you had to figure out? So the, and also just like the general climate of like supply chain and how it impacted you. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's not even just supply chain and material costs. And then it's, it's also labor. The labor, uh, is so difficult, especially on the residential side. It is another reason why I backed away from it because it felt as it felt as the labor pool on the residential side were like rookies. You know, these are these are people. Even if they were a, a established subcontractor, their labor pool was still they were still getting like new guys. And you know, they'll claim they're a painter, but they were you know, a Not, carpenter the day yeah, before. And it's yeah. like, so it, it was just been very difficult to navigate why, the labor why is pool. That though? Just there's not, there's not people, there's nothing sexy about blue collar, yeah. right? So the, the, the labor pool for the construction industry is getting smaller and smaller. I mean, and that's why we have a lot of trades being filled by, you know, Latinos or Mexicans because they're willing, they, they love blue collar. They love it. That's a good day's work for them. And they enjoy it. But I think our society has taught, you know, most American born people, American born men grow up in a society where blue collar is not sexy. So they're not aspiring to go be a tradesman or be an electrician, a plumber, a, you know. And they and like like idiots, they're gonna work for like some seventy K a year job for like and the they next could, 40 when they years, could be making like, 120 as a plumber, you know. Or they can make a shit I know <laughs> I know GCs like I'm not saying it's easy work. I I've 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 spilled into a lot of them, and like they make bank, but like it's tough work. Yeah, because I think a lot of them don't know how to scale up a business. Yep. So they work, they they get to where you are, or mm -hmm. even less than. They're not working on four projects at a time. They're working on yeah. one project at a time, and it's just them. And I remember talking to one guy. He was like, "Yeah, like you know, I could I could never have to work again, but mm -hmm. like I can't because like my whole body's broken from doing the work that I've <laughs> yeah. done the past like thirty years." I mean, it's true, man. That's another thing. It is <clears throat> it is a tough industry, and <clears throat> there's so many other ways out there. If you're a smart uh, man or woman, there's so many other ways to make that money it, in other ways, right? Yeah, true. So then you then don't doing have, it yourself, then for do, sure. Yeah, yeah, doing it yourself and or, you know, you don't have to work the hours that you do. I mean, general contracting, it's like, it, it's a constant. It never stops. Literally, it it's, can be seven days a week. A lot of the stuff I'm doing right now, since we're in commercial interiors, uh, we're working in like medical spaces and stuff, so we have to work after hours. So, yeah. I mean, I have guys working until midnight on some jobs. So it, it, it's a business that really doesn't sleep. So it's long hours. It's exhausting. There's a reason why you see like old GCs that are all gray and grumpy. Yeah, you did, yeah, <laughs> for good reason. It's, it's, it's tough. So you, so you, yeah. you got to figure out how to get out of. You have to figure out how to get out of the actual working in the business. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so, okay. So you figured out like 
actually you have a ton of problems. I don't even know how you solve for any of them. So you have supply chain issues, you yeah. have contractor issues yeah. and like labor issues. Um, you have like cost of goods issues. Costs all over okay, the place. Okay, so then how do you actually fix any of this stuff? So what did you actually do to like get the right people, make sure the project is done on time? How yeah. did you find stuff that wasn't way overpriced or did you not and you just... It's it's a constant game, especially lately of pivoting. So So construction in the first place is a never ending game of solving problems. It's it's no matter how well you have it planned out, something's gonna happen during the day and you're gonna have to solve that problem. So that, that's always a constant with construction. But with all these added, all these external factors now that we have um, attributing to, to it, like the supply chain, labor shortages, material costs all over the place, it, it just makes it that much more difficult. So yeah, you have to constantly pivot. And also, and this is a part that I actually, I lack is communicating with the owners and or banks um so on residential you know usually dealing with owners but on commercial dealing with owners slash banks right communicating all of these issues and like that's ahead of time, ahead of time. Ahead of time. Yeah. Or, or as they're happening yeah. so so me i like to be like okay well fuck i'll solve it you know whatever try to solve it and i don't communicate all these things to them so then when they see you know a week delay they don't understand that i've had to pivot for three days just to to get yeah, us yeah. back on track, you know? So I think that's the, the biggest lesson that I'm learning is communicating these things to the owners, to the banks, that way they are in understanding of it. And then when you hit them with a change order, you can get paid on that change order and they're not fighting you for it. I just wanna take a second and thank the sponsor of today's episode, HubSpot. Now, what words come to mind when you think about entrepreneurship? For me, it's grind, hustle, strategy, hard freaking work because building something from the ground up is anything but easy. HubSpot is on a mission to help your business grow better with a CRM platform that's easy to buy, use, and love. With thousands of integrations teams actually use, HubSpot works the way you do, hard. And if you wanna figure out how to streamline your deals, easy. The Sales Hub makes it easy to close more deals by automating your busy work. If you need to automate your social media, Piece of cake, the Marketing Hub has everything you need to publish, post, and monitor your social media channels all in one place. Learn how HubSpot can make it easier for your business to grow better at HubSpot.com. Um, so you solved some of these problems, but you've also now scaled to working four projects at a time. Mm -hmm. So um, even in the past two years, you've done something that some GCs can't do and you scaled up yourself. And you actually said, like at the beginning, you're like, you were not great at business school no. and you were like, not, not having it. So yeah. how did you solve for this? Like, what did you do differently that is allowing you to be successful now? Uh, honestly, I don't, I don't know if I have solved it. <laughs> so no, but you're solving. Like, you, there's, yeah, it's always learning, yeah. always figuring it out. Yeah. But you're doing something right. I, I, I think where I find my success is that I, I get up every day and, and I work. So I know how to build. So when I don't have the solution to maybe some of the business stuff. I'm just like, fuck it, I'm gonna go to work. And I just, I stay on the grind and keep pushing along the project. So I think that is, I'm still trying to figure out how to be a better businessman, but I'm finding success because I at least get up and I get the job done and I just keep moving things along. Even if I'm taking, even if I'm, you know, getting hurt maybe on some of the costs, I might not or be making as much money. Yourself, or yeah, or yeah, or I'm grinding, I'm not paying myself for the hours I'm putting in, but at least I'm keeping things moving along. And, and I guess I'm just, trying to figure out as I go, I'm like, hey, look, if I just keep getting up every morning and I keep working at it, keep chipping away at it daily, then, you know, I'll figure out the other stuff. Which I think is like, that's like the X factor in like any startup, mm -hmm. small business. Like it's never gonna be 100%. Yeah. But if like the entrepreneur is like willing to like figure the yeah. shit out and go through it, like that's what differentiates. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think that one of the issues people have is they like become a business owner and they either build themselves a job and then that sucks or they try and remove themselves too quickly without understanding all the components of the business when it's yep. not functioning right yep like there's this point where you still have to work in it but then you got to figure out a way to scale yourself yep. up did you have you like hired out people because you just mentioned you're just starting to be profitable now yeah so what's yeah. your so what's your you know the past two years not the easiest time to start a business yeah but you you started to hire and you start to um, build out or? so i still i still manage i had a superintendent working for me for a little while um and then i have a girl help me in the office um taking care of some of the receivables and payables. Super was your first big hire then? Super was the first big hire. How'd it go? It went well, but then he left me to go back to work for himself as a handyman. Shit. So it was great. It yeah. was, great. It was great. <laughs> like He was covering some, some some of the residential stuff I still had going. He was covering those for me. And then I, I have a hard time 
the next big step is is hiring a, a full time super to manage the commercial projects for me because right now I, I I'm in the field all day. Yeah. And if I'm not in the field, I'm on the phone all day with my subs. So I still supervise all my commercial projects. I mean, I'm I'm very hands on, um, and only. I mean, I could I can I'm now I can afford to to bring somebody on, but it's also I got I don't know how to. I need to hire somebody that's really good at it already, yeah. and then maybe just trust them to do it, or you know, or have to train somebody. So that's going to be a, like a difficult step. I was going to, I was going to ask when you, when you like, so again, small business owner hiring, like super mm -hmm. critical role for the first super time. Critical. Like super, super yeah. critical. Um, obviously you don't have it down to like a perfect science, but what are the things like people should look out for? Somebody's hiring that first like, yeah. critical hire. What made you pick this, this super? Uh, honestly, because he was just a young kid who I thought was, you know, influential and, or, or, or that I could influence him rather and yeah, yeah. kind of, you know, curate him how I like, wanted. Like like teachability. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, very. He was younger, he was ambitious, wanted to get in the industry. But now I'm, I'm realizing that my next hire for a super will be I'm going to steal, you know, a, a 40, 50-year-old man that's been doing this <laughs> for another company for years. And yeah. I'm going to pay him what he needs to get paid and he's going to do it better than I could. You know? um, okay, so if you're going to make that kind of hire, you need money. And let's, need talk, money, about, yeah. let's talk about cash flow, let's talk about profitability. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you can be as specific or as ambiguous as you want. Some people yeah. will talk in numbers, but I'm still curious, like even percentages, like how did you what you close one project out yeah. now you're working on four? Why only two years later you're starting to be profitable? Um I guess it's not that I wasn't did you pay did you pay yourself? I paid myself. Okay. Yeah. So, so I paid myself. So I guess that's that's it. I was profitable, but you know, after paying myself, my expenses, I just I just left money in the company because as I said before, a GC is like a bank. You, you are always having to float money, and a lot of times, and this is where I need to get better on the business side. You know, a lot of times I'm I'm not getting paid from the owner, thirty forty five days after I bill, but all my guys they want to get paid on Friday. All my subcontractors yeah, they don't give a shit, and and that's and that's the reason why like that's why the good ones that's how I keep them showing up because I pay them on Friday. So I'm having to float a lot of cash a lot of times. I mean, I got to keep my guys paid. Um, because they do good work for me and you know, I got to respect them and they need to get paid and that's so do you like, do you, like when you do this kind of business, you have like massive cash flow issues. I'm assuming if that's the case, cause you have like a net 30 or a net 60 yeah. on the owner paying. You? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So I'll be floating. So maybe I'll invoice, you know, um, take like this barbershop. I just finished one of my invoices. Uh, it was a smaller job, right? The whole job was only like 125 K, but you know, I sent a $30,000 invoice. Yeah. I wouldn't get paid. That one was actually had to go through the bank, had to go through the developer, then to the bank. By the time I got my money was 30, 45 days in the rear. Yeah. From the time I sent that invoice, but I'm paying all my guys every week. So so I'm having to float that 35K for just on that job. And, and like would you if you had to redo it, would you mm. like go raise money, take out a loan? Would you do it different? Um I would. It make things. It would make things easier, honestly. And that's. Um. I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking about. You know, should I? Should I? If I want to scale, right? I need good help. Yeah. So if I'm gonna afford a good super that's been doing this for 20 plus years, right? I'm gonna need to pay him 100k or more. So I'm at that point. I'm like, do I? You know, do I go get a loan to hire a guy for six months and then he can kill these commercial projects for me while I go out and get more business and while you know while. Yeah. I, build the business so that's that's kind of where i'm at right now what do you what do you think i mean i could i could float it but then i put myself in a pinch it's like i should yeah. use somebody else's money right and then i can re recoup it per the job because anybody on the job should get paid by the job right yeah, like the 100%. super's expense should be on that job so but it, again it's it's the cash flow thing um what was like the the biggest like shit hit the fan moment your in your entrepreneurial journey where this things like did not work out hmm. shit hit the fan honestly <laughs> every day or not <laughs> i mean shit hits the fan frequently but as i said i've been pretty fortunate thus far i you know anytime i think that i might oh my gosh shit, am i gonna have a cash flow issue yeah. It, it just has worked out for me. So I don't know. Maybe I've just been blessed, been fortunate. <laughs> blessed, fortunate, hardworking too, I yeah. think. Who do you like when you when you're trying to like learn this now, where do you go to learn and to sort of like upskill yourself? Like mm. you're trying to figure all this shit out. So what's your strategy? I just study I study other companies. I study people. Yeah. Um, you know, the guy who 
brought me really into the professional construction industry. My mentor of sorts, he wasn't really a great mentor, but he was a great guy to study. Like he was a gunslinger. This guy was, you know, he was always bringing in deals, always making it happen. And then he, he had the ability to then, you know, come through with it. He would, he was like a developer slash builder. He's like a restaurant owner. He's got his hands a little bit of everything. However, <clears throat> you know, if he struck up a deal, he would then find a way to get it done or he would build it. So studying him a bit kind of just gave me the inspiration that, cause I, I knew talking to him, he didn't always have the answers, but he was like, it's not rocket science. We'll figure yeah. it out. And it's not nothing, nothing we do in construction. It's not rocket science. You can, you can figure it out. But I think a lot of it is just getting, getting the deal on the table and then figuring out how to get so, it done. So like when you say that though, like then you're saying one of the most important skills, which I think I agree with is sales. Yeah. You got to sell yourself, mm -hmm. you got to sell yourself nonstop. So you like, you accomplish that by having a great network mm -hmm. and you're still going out and closing deals right now. Yeah. How do you, how do you bring in new business? Um, I haven't even, so that's one of the reasons why I couldn't find anything on me. I, I literally, I don't, I haven't even marketed. So I didn't even tell most of my friends I started my company for the first year. I didn't. Why? Because I was afraid to fail. Dude, no. that, it's like classic, <laughs> like imposter syndrome yeah. shit. Yeah, like, I didn't want to be like, oh, look, I'll start this general contracting company. And then yeah. six months later, be back working as a superintendent. So oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't tell anybody because um, I was really afraid to fail. And then as I build it, I just, I don't really want to show it off until I'm, I'm super proud of it. And I'm still just, you know, I'm still in it. Like I'm still just grinding I get it. on I th it. I think, I think you should show it off more, man. I think, well, I think, you know, like the whole, the whole building a personal brand, like, yeah can't convince me that's not the way to do business yeah like that's how like this show happened like build a personal brand like i go crazy on social like right. nonstop, off like content marketing um i haven't even had the exposure you have and like that's giving me like speaking opportunities and yeah. like incredible network and like non-stop yeah, like, yeah. job offers investment into the company i'm working at like it's like insane mm -hmm. like when it's funny like when you have a name out there, even if people don't really know who you are, just because you're putting yourself out there, they like they learn to trust who you are mm. without ever meeting you, right? Mm. Yeah. Like, I think you got to double down on this shit. You got to ride this mm. wave. You got to build out the personal brand. Yeah. But your your company's out there now. It, it's out there, and I think you're, I think you're very right. And I've I've been very reticent to do that because again, it's my it's my fear of of it, my fear of failure and fear of you know it's funny that I even did the, did that show because I. I don't, I don't know. This like, is I don't so love different from your personality. Very. Like, now talking to you for like whatever, like thirty minutes. I'm yeah. like, there's no way this guy is looking to you know be in the limelight. Exactly. It's very like I I like it, but I don't like it because I do like to keep things very like close to the chest as yeah. far as, um, you know, like what I do for a living. And I don't I don't love. It's almost like with the show, I had to put a facade on, right? Put a facade on. This is what I want the world to see. I don't really let people see the real, you know, Kurt, what I actually yeah. do, and. Um, so I don't know. I'm still still figuring out with the business, but you're right. I do need to dive into the self exposure or double down on on myself a little bit and build build my brand, build the company brand, use the tools that I have. Yeah, available. I mean, no, I would argue that very few other GCs, if not and like or maybe none, would ever have had that ability to have that exposure at the level that you had. Yeah, at this stage yeah. of your career. I think it's just a matter of like, how do you get over that imposter syndrome? Because you're dealing with it right now, 100%. Mm. But like every entrepreneur in the world has that. Every entrepreneur. And I actually think that, like when I, I work with like a lot of entrepreneurs, yeah. like not, not in construction, but like, I mean, building something from scratch is the same shit. It's yeah. a lot of, a lot of, it's tough. Like it's mm. tough and you have to put yourself out there yeah. and your friends and your family will be like, this guy's crazy. Like why, you know? But yeah. I think that when you put yourself out there, like even like you're doing this show, you're like, you're laying like everything that you've done on the line and, I think that it holds you accountable, mm. which I think is like what a good mentor should do. Yep. I think that when you like commit to something in public, I think it forces you to actually yeah. like do it. Like you, you like what's the saying? Like you burn the boats or burn the ships yeah. or whatever. Like burn the whatever it is. Yeah, no, that's the, you, you, that's that's so true. And that's I've actually used that strategy with myself. If if I do tell yeah. people about something that I haven't done yet. It's almost like I'm telling them because that holds me accountable. I'm like, well, I better fucking do it now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Well, you got it, right? Yeah. You got it. You're like, so this guy, I don't care if this guy isn't successful, but at least yeah. like, he's like, you know, like if you put yourself out there, you say you're going to do something, like you can't mm. be a liar. You can't. can't, you can't cannot no. be a liar, especially, yeah. yeah, especially if you have any pride in yourself as a man. I mean, you got to live up to the expectations you set for yourself. So, But but <laughs> he went on this show and like, you're right. This is not your personality at all going on this show. No. But now you can actually do it you can do it like with yourself, like with yeah. your true personality. 
like when you put yourself out there now, like like you turn yourself into like a content marketing machine, like you're gonna get nonstop business. Yeah. But then you don't have to feel like you're putting on this facade or this face or whatever yeah. because you're talking about this. Like what we're talking about now is like what you're actually passionate about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like absolutely. none of this is none of this is BS. This is what you actually care mm-hmm. about, and this is like this is your like hundred and ten percent of your life. Mm-hmm. So you just turn like this into like your your daily, and then I think that would attract business. I think mm-hmm. that would actually give you like a a huge amount of success yeah. and probably expedite your growth much quicker yeah. because now if you think about all the different parts of the business that like a, a strong personal brand accompl- like touches like yeah maybe you have more exposure on social but like also you'll have a better time landing projects because mm. like now people will want to associate with your firm you'll have a probably an easier time attracting talent too mm. Cause you're yeah. probably going to get for sure you're just gonna have people that want to work with you just yeah. like be in your sphere right like yeah. the, so i think like you double down on that. Yeah. No, you're, you, you, I mean, you're right. You're right. And, and I, like I said, I've been just hesitant to do so because I, I want, I guess, I guess I'm, I mean, it is like, dude, only two years. And, and I said the first year of it, I was just trying to figure out where I wanted yeah. the company to go. You know, I was trying to figure out, do I stay in residence? Do I stay in commercial? So I think I just clarity. want it to be, you know, I want to have a solid vision, which I do now finally have a solid vision of the company, what I want the company to be, where I want it to go. So now that I have that, I need to start capitalizing on on some of the things that you're talking about. So how do you, okay, so without the, without the personal branding stuff, that's mm-hmm. cool, but how do you scale up? So where do you take it from here? So you have four projects now, mm-hmm. trying to hire super. If somebody's at this stage yeah. in, in, in their GC life or their, their GC mm-hmm. business, how do you scale up? Um... I mean, I, I can't do it without, I can't do it without help. And so I got to get the right help um, and or partnerships. So, and that's kind of like three of the biggest projects. I mean, in, in all actuality, I have, I actually have six current projects going on, but two are closing out. So I got four, but three of those are, I've got uh, partners with them and I'm, I'm, I'm acting almost as a subcontractor to them, but I'm, I'm building out the whole jobs for them. And those have gone really smoothly because we all know our role and we rely on, you know, one another to perform it. So I think if I'm to scale it, I just, I've got to find the right people, um, you know, put them in their silo. They do what they need to do to run the company. And then I can continue to, you know, float 10,000 feet. And, yeah. And like what's your moving. vision for like where you want to take this? I would love to be a, I would love to, to do, stick with the commercial interiors, commercial yeah. outfits. As I said, I think it's a really good business model for a GC. It's a safe business model too. But I would love to be, you know, multi-state. Um, I'd love to be the go-to guy for certain restaurants and or businesses that I'm their guy when they're opening up in a new city, Franchise new state. Boom, yeah. I'm the guy that comes and does the outfit. That's all relationship play. All relationship. Yeah. All relationship. Yeah. Is there like, is there like, like, um, like regulatory things you got to think about when you switch states in this industry? Um, just applications. So you have reciprocity uh, in a lot of states with, with your North Carolina GC license. You have reciprocity in a lot. But you have to apply for it and then take – sometimes you got to take a small exam. Yeah. That's it. And then you can just apply. Okay. Mm-hmm. Except so, for up north, it's a little more difficult up there. Um, I want to just – so now I want like general like entrepreneurship advice, people that are starting mm-hmm. out. So what – is you know, if you're talking to a new entrepreneur, like yeah. what's your best advice for somebody who's starting something from scratch? Uh, I guess you, I think to be successful in anything, right? I mean, you, you know, no, I forget what you said, no wind is favorable if you, if you know not which port you sail. So you have to have a vision, right? Yeah. You, and you have to then um, tackle that and be good, become good at what you do. So um, figure out what it is that you want to do and then master that, that skill. Right. I mean, you have to have a you have to have a vision in mind and then you got to tackle it. And then from there, I think, I mean, nothing as an entrepreneur, nothing gets around just hard work. Even when you don't have the answers, don't know what to do. Just get to work because it's better than it's better than sitting there in your thoughts and just, you know, spinning your wheels. Just yeah. get to work and get something done. For me, at least I've found if I'm at least getting something done, if I'm if I'm knocking off tasks during the day, I feel productive. And then things kind of fall into place. And then if you're going to talk about like personality traits, what are the the personality traits that have made you the most successful? So I think that uh, one of the most important things if you're going to be an entrepreneur 
I mean, take this with a grain of salt. Like I said, I'm only an entrepreneur for two years now. Okay. I, I, actually, that's not, that's a lie. I had a detailing company in college, but. Um, Another thing you never told anybody. About. <laughs> yeah, never yeah. Told, yeah, never told anybody. I don't tell people a lot of stuff. But I think to be a um, successful entrepreneur, you have to be likable um, and trustworthy. So people want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So you, you have to win people over. You got to get in front of them, first of all, so that they know you. And then you got to get them to like you. How do you get them to like you? I mean, me, I found, like, I'm a pretty humorous guy, like, Sharing a laugh with somebody, I think, is probably one of the, the best way to build a bond with somebody. Yeah. And then you got to get them to trust you. So, and that's you know a whole nother issue. I mean, you just have to be a, a stand up person to get people to trust you, right? Have you have you like um, as you you know you build up your network and like it's a lot of like people connections. Um, it's happened to me before. It's happened to a lot of people that I know. But have you been screwed by people like people that have just like totally double crossed you? Like, how have you solved for that? Uh, it, it definitely, honestly, more so when. When I was working for other people, I just always felt undervalued and or underpaid yeah. or, you know, wasn't getting the bonuses that I should have been getting or what we negotiated. But um, honestly, as I started my own company, everybody has been pretty good. I mean, definitely I've gotten paid late on stuff, but everyone's been pretty good. I haven't got screwed over by anybody. Um, but I think that's also because I'm careful about who I do contract with. I mean, I'm, I don't enter into any deal um randomly every yeah. every deal that comes my way is um from a contact you know it's it's uh because they know me or know me from somebody else it's it's i'm not out there shopping you know just shopping for deals and i think that's where people get get screwed because when you do shop around like that you're, you're also dealing with an owner that's shopping around um and, and you know doesn't value a lot of people undervalue GCs in general, or people in construction, I think. A lot of people definitely undervalue their time and expertise. So I just think that's how people do get screwed in this industry is, you know, shopping around, shopping around. They want the best deal. They want the best deal. You, you can't have it all, right? You don't, get, you don't get the timeline, you know, the price and the quality. Yeah. yeah you get two of them. So, so you got to choose which two you want, yeah. um, at least in contracting. I just want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's episode, Manscaped. Now, Manscaped has spent two years designing the most comfortable boxer briefs out there. Sleek, soft, comfortable, and flexible. The brand new boxers 2.0 from Manscaped are the most comfortable boxers I've ever worn. They are the global leaders in below-the-waist grooming. They have the Lawnmower 4.0. Now they have the Boxers 2.0. If you want to check these out for 20% off plus free shipping, use our code 20 success at manscaped.com. Here's a little bit more about the boxers. They are a game changer. The micro modal fabric is buttery soft and breathable. It keeps everything cool. Walk, run, strut. These moisture wicking boxers breathe without breaking a sweat. The tagless waistbands hug your body without digging in and it lays flat against your skin to reduce chafing. Front fly opens, giving easy access and makes bathroom breaks quick and efficient. You can even choose from arrangement of designs and colors and sizes ranging from small to 3XL. Now, get 20% off plus free shipping with our code 20success at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with our code 20success at manscaped.com. Um, no, I just like, you actually, you've had like a, like, I ask all these questions because like there's people that have like horrible stories from when they were starting business. Yeah. You actually haven't dealt with like a lot of negative stuff. Dude, I've been extremely blessed, literally fortunate and like uh, like <laughs> I don't know, they're they're like knock on let's knock on. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm sure I will get let's keep it going, man. Let's sooner go. than later. But again, I, I um yeah, I, I don't contract with people I don't I don't know and or don't have a relationship with. So And like like I guess I am curious, like after you so after you went into the show and you came out of it mm -hmm. and you had a, like this amount of fame, has it impacted or changed anything? No, because I haven't, I haven't capitalized um, on it like like you talked about. I, I still even after the show, I you know, I mean, I still have a website. I'm building it right now, um, and that's mainly because I I didn't want to showcase all, some of the previous projects I had done because it's, that's not the work I want to attract moving forward. Understood. Yeah. So I'm 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 only now building it out so that I can showcase some of these commercial interiors that I've completed, because that's the trajectory that I want for the company. So, um, no, it didn't really affect me business wise. Other than people do like, especially some of my subs, they they want to work 
for me. They don't want to work with me. Yeah. So that is has probably helped a little bit. And whether you know, you I don't know. Double down on that. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Like yeah. it's gonna make your life like exceptionally easier. Mm. That's that's my yeah. <laughs> my two cents. Whatever. Yeah. Figure out like go hire somebody to help you out with like content or something. Yeah. Like just throw up your phone. Like this is like Gary V yeah. style shit. Like you just put anything that you love, you put it out into the world, you make yep. content around it. Yep. But I think that's yeah. I know. I I need to. I think I just been. I'm afraid to just like take that leap and like i said i want i want to have all the pieces in place i want to have i want to have everything they'll structured never, they'll and, never be in place though. yeah i know <laughs> they'll 100 never be in place yeah so i think that yeah i think that everyone has that problem i think that the people that are the most successful at it they don't think too hard about it because if yeah. you think too hard about yep. it you're going to realize that not everything's perfect no you're right i mean that's if you listen to any of these you know, super successful entrepreneurs they're just they just fuck it and go all in. I mean, you yeah, because just... you gotta have a little bit. You gotta have a little bit of like not thinking clearly mm -hmm. when you're starting something that you want to blow yeah. up and make it huge. Right. Like what I mean by that is like if you think through every possible thing that can go wrong. Yeah. This this show would have never happened. Yep. This podcast, your business, it yep. never would have happened. Yeah, so true. Because people just like get up in their own head, mm -hmm. and then you just you just absolutely sabotage your own progress. Absolutely. But yeah. you gotta. Yeah, I mean like. You're at the point, like I'm, I'm sort of like preaching to the choir, like you're, you're in it. You could definitely leverage yeah. it. But I think also like, like, I mean, like the, the person that you were on the show and everything that pulls up when you Google, that's not even like who you are. No, no, not at the all. shit you're proud of. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's not at all. I mean, I had, like I said, I put on a bit of a facade, um, you know, I don't think, for, I think facade is too Maybe harsh. not facade, but it was just. Facade just, insinuates that like the personality you had on the show, you're pretty like. To the point. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was very much myself. I guess I was just it, I didn't I didn't open up really let people know about who who I actually am, what That's, inspires yeah. me, what drives me, why you know what makes my my clock tick. Yeah, so. and and has your like as I I also just want to understand why you thought this was a good idea when you're trying to actually build a business because somebody said to me like hey. Scott, like I'm trying to start this thing, but just don't worry, I'm gonna film. For, yeah, like X period eight of time. weeks. <laughs> yeah, sure. dude, like that's. I put out fires for two months after I got back. I have no doubt. And I had, so I had a guy that I had a joint venture on, on, on a residential project with, and he stepped up for me. I paid him to run point on all the projects for me while I was gone. Yeah. Um, and he did a good job, and I had a, I had a, a the super at the time running the project. water, by the way? No, I'm good. I'm all right. right. Okay, um, I had here. that super running, yeah, it was, um, <laughs> running jobs for me. So it was good, but it was just, it was very difficult to manage that while I'm filming 15, 16 hours a day. It was like, it was chaos. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but it was, it was a, uh, and I've used this analogy before. I had to pull the scales out and say, okay, what, what could this hurt me? And then what, you know, how yeah, could this help me? Potential benefit. Yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was a, you know, cost versus success. And, and so I figured that, okay, if I lose a little bit by filming the show, I, I think I can gain from it after. And that's where I'm at now. I mean, you're not wrong. That's mm -hmm. why I think it, like it, it's, it, you have to like double down and lean into it. Yeah, for sure. Um, your business, like the priorities that you had when you started the business versus now, have those changed at all? Like what you're actually focused on accomplishing? How has your mindset changed? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you, <laughs> GCing is a stressful business in general, right? So I've definitely gotten better at managing my stress. You can't let things stress you off. But my focus is definitely, um, definitely changed. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more particular about, you know, even the subs I'm using. I want... I want everybody that is working for me. I want us. It wanted to be a partnership. That way, expectations are set beforehand. Um, and then, but how do you do that when they're just subcontractors? That's not easy. It's, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of relationship building. To be, yeah. you know, to be honest, um, like one of my best subs, um, my metal stud and drywall guy, I've just built a really good relationship, really good rapport with him. You know, we'll, you know, we're talking call and shoot the shit for a couple of minutes, just, yeah. just stuff like that, like warming them up to a, um, not just a business relationship, but an actual relationship. And I think that that inspires people to, to do better work for you, you know, and or then work for you. So, if, you know, if I come in on a job and, uh, you know, their number's over budget, if I've got somebody that has been working with me, it's way easier to say, hey, look, I need you to cut 5% here, 
that way we can do this job together. So it's yeah. almost like bringing them in as, as partners. And that's what I'm that's what I'm focused on now is everybody I work with. I want it to be a very um, almost personal relationship with these guys. That way they are inspired to do good work for me and then stick with me because the market is crazy. I mean, you, you, you have guys that if they're a guy that you've never worked with before, they'll walk off the job because they'll get paid, you know, five cents more a brick somewhere else or something. It's, it, you know, that's stupid. Insane. Yeah. But then, that's, that's, that's how the market is. is the market like, so is the labor market a little bit better now or? Um, it's, it's tough, but I've, I've definitely honed in on, I only use certain guys. I very rarely now am, am out there trying to compare prices. Like, you know, if I've got a good sub, I'm not out there shopping another subcontractor for that same division. Um, I'm just breaking it down to, you know, to linear foot of, of metal stud and square foot of drywall and then kind of just just getting that price together and saying, hey, look, what's your profit margin here? Okay, I'm, a, I'm good with you making this much profit. What's your time in here? So it's more of, yeah, I'm not I'm not shopping now. I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, make somebody work on something for me. I mean, it takes a lot to put together an estimate, right? So yeah. I hate wasting people's time. Actually, by the way, so I was just at we're, we're in my we're in Miami right now in Florida, yeah. and there was a emerge. It was like a huge tech conference like two weeks ago. Yeah, and the winner of this like pitch competition with Kevin O'Leary, he had this tool. Uh -huh. It was like an AI tool, and what it does is it uh, with AI measures every measurement that you would normally do in an estimate yeah. in like the matter of like seconds. Wow. It's like in 10 seconds, it does like a whole building. And the guy like- I need, like, I need that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, get, I'll, 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 I'll give you yeah, the name of the company after. That. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. So I mean like that's something, but anyways, I yeah. just thought of that, but that's, a, and he was going on about how insane a process it is to estimate it properly. Is. It is, and it's like that's, and, and luckily that's when I got into the industry, that's what I started off doing. I was a project engineer, so I was doing estimates and I learned the old school way on, on, on plans. So I would pull out the set of plans, you know, I'd have all my uh, measurements and I would scale everything and then compile an estimate. Um, but I need to get more technological with it because yeah. I still kind of do the old school oh, this way. Is, this is cutting edge as hell. Like yeah. no one else. Has. It's not like you're behind the, it's yeah. not like you're missing out and all the other GCs have it. That's why he was so successful in yeah. his first year. Cause he's like, he's building something that and, no one's ever heard. And of. that's, that's can be so helpful. I mean, I, that's part of getting business is you have to be able to turn around an estimate at a reasonable time. Yeah. You know, cause they are, you know, you, typically if you have a, you know, bigger outfit, say a dental practice or something, they're getting two, you know, at least two or three bids from bigger GCs and then they can compare them a little bit. So you have to be able to produce an estimate in a timely manner. And that's something that I definitely struggle with because I'm doing it all myself still. <laughs> I'm not yeah. outsourcing that. So yeah, you, like, that's something that that's one of those things like where you look at like, the, the, the activities or the things you could do that would have yeah. the highest impact on your business. Yeah. Like that's definitely one of them. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Like that's like probably like, you know, you take your, you take your business from X, you know, whatever it is in revenue and you like, you know, probably 10 X that when you start yeah. to sort of outsource that mm -hmm. task, but that comes down to like hiring the right people, figuring yeah. out exactly who's not going to screw you yeah. by doing the job ethically, quickly, responsibly. But that's mm -hmm. like, Again, it all comes down to like hiring relationship. Like it's all the same shit. Like yeah. that's why like you build this company, you build software company, you build like services company, like anything. Yeah, it's every business people. is people. It's always people, <laughs> it's which always is like people. it's funny because people just like totally miss that point. Yeah, it's like how do I how do I transact my way to success mm -hmm. and and just like turn and burn and use and abuse people and I don't care about yeah. the relationships and it never works out. Like it doesn't matter if you're doing what you're doing or you're selling something that's a $10 million thing to somebody. I mean, even if you're selling to an organization, like a large organization, you're selling, yeah. like my background's in software and tech. Okay. So I sell, you know, you sell like a $10 million piece of software to somebody yeah. because you're still dealing with people. Yeah. There's a level of trust has to be yep. established. That's It's the same shit, yep. same shit on any level. Um, what was I gonna say? I was going somewhere with this too. Can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, been, oh, I was gonna say like, when you, when you build out your company, like what's the point when and maybe this is something that you wouldn't do, but I see this as like a huge like revenue opportunity. Yeah. Do you ever go into like pure development, like where you're? Oh, for sure. Up? I think that is the eventual goal of anybody, any inspired individual in this you industry. Have the team. You, you have the team, and then once you get to a place where you've got the either bank connections or the the money. Yeah. It, I think it's a no brainer to get into development. I mean, that is, um, yeah, I think that's the end goal of of any builder. I mean that that that's in my, in my mind, starting from conception to con construction. I mean that's that's the whole the whole package, you know. So and eventually, how would I would you love, go into that? Like you have to go raise money or what? I mean, just 
make this business successful first, you know, yeah. and then once I get really good at doing what I do or my company gets really good at w doing what we do, I think it would just be, you know, a matter of time before I end up in that, you know, in that part of the industry. Um, yeah. And and I do have a lot of connections in that industry. Um, but yeah, just a matter of time. And it's, again, it's one of those things why I haven't like promoted my company that hard. It's, it's one of those things that I don't do anything quick. <laughs> like, like I think you on could. things. You, I know, but I, I you, like you think too much. Like yeah, you're thinking you're overthinking. Well, I mean, it's good to overthink sometimes. It's probably yeah. what, that's probably actually why you've actually had like a pretty good two years. Yeah, because you think through stuff. Yeah, but I mean, there's something to be said for like velocity too. Yeah, and just like moving quick. Yeah, and breaking shit and figuring it out. Yeah. Not always. It's not always fun. Not always. No, but some of those guys that are just hammers. I mean, they <laughs> they get shit done. I mean, yeah. that's all they know. You know, is they just push, 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 and you know, act without thinking and, you know, super successful. Like Steven, Steven and Steven's dad from, from the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. He's like that. The guy's a hammer. He just, he's just a gunslinger. He just puts his deals together it, and yeah. he gets it done. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and it's wild. I mean, how quickly he's able to, to get shit done. It's also stressful as hell though. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you gotta have, I think that another, like another thing that really makes people successful is like their, their um, confidence in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that that can only be that you built that like over time. Like, I think, like, when you've, like, killed it for multiple years in a row, yeah. then you realize, like, hell, you know, I figured out all this other shit for the past 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Even if I go into a situation that I don't really know that well, mm. there's a pretty damn good chance I'm going to be able to figure it out. Sure. Yeah. Again, not rocket science. We can figure anything out if we want to. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean. No, I, I, I feel that. Okay. Um, I want to do uh, I want to do a couple, like, like rapid fire to pull out, like, insights yeah. from your life. Is there anything else that like is top of mind for you right now that's like really relevant that you want to like go into? Like I, I feel like where you're exactly at with your business. Yeah. Like you're you're at a at a great point right now. I still think you should double down on the personal brand stuff. Yeah. But like you are like killing it in like the small business space. And then mm -hmm. it's like just like uphill from here. You've already yeah. figured out like the how to make a business functional, yeah. how to make a business profitable. That's like <laughs> That's the core. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the tough the part. Core. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm still in the I'm still in the thick of it though. I'm in I'm in the grind. I mean, I'm not gonna try and preach to anybody about what it takes to be an entrepreneur because I'm sure people know a lot better than I. You yeah, know? but a lot of people know a lot less too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for building like, like we were talking before, like like businesses that are like not like sexy businesses, mm -hmm. like it's just like hard work. But yeah, I think that if you look at the businesses that really take off quick like you have like a lot of software businesses or yeah. now you have like a lot of like a lot of blockchain and mm. crypto and stuff like that and they just like attract money yeah and they attract so much money and if you develop a great product for example you can use the internet to get it out yeah to a million people overnight very easily yeah i'm not saying it's easy yeah. but i'm saying that when you're dealing with people and projects and physical things that you have to do and you have to build like not you're not brick and mortar but like same category yeah. like you're building shit mm -hmm. you're selling shit you're yeah. you're solving shit in real life yeah. and you don't have the ability to scale up at the same level you can't just take no. on tomorrow 2000 project no. if you had a software product you could yeah. you could tomorrow take on 2000 users yeah. you don't have the luxury of doing that no. so you got to figure out and every single thing you're doing is a high risk activity technically as a business owner yeah. and that's something that i think like is truly admirable when you can't figure that out because i think mm. that that's exceptionally hard to do because mm. i see a lot of people that don't do it well and i see a lot of people that again they've done the same thing as you but then they stop after two projects and that's the rest of their life yep they started, but then to scale up is like the difficult mm. part. So you're yeah. solving for that. No, and that and that's exactly that's exactly where I don't want to get stuck in. And yeah. that's I've I've noticed that lately because I get pulled into the grind and then I'm you know, I'm just running these projects all day and I'm like, Hey, where's the vision at? You know, yeah. You get stuck and then you, you lose sight of where you want this thing to go. So how do you how do you keep reminding yourself of where the vision's at? What's your <laughs> I get fucking tired. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like out there sweating, working with the guys. Like, I don't need to be doing this right now. Like, I'm 100%. I'm supposed to be the the producer out here, you know. Well, you do anything. Okay, you do anything for like you know you've been doing it for like two and a half or whatever two yeah. years, right? Yeah. You do anything for ten years, you're gonna be pretty damn good at it. Yeah. So like at, you're at this point right now where you can start to move out. Yeah. I think you can start to move out right now. I think that that's probably gonna be your next big challenge. Yeah, yeah. Like where you hire out and, mm -hmm. and like hiring the right people, hiring yeah. trustworthy people. Like. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely where I'm at. And that's, yeah, that's where I'm, it's the next task to tackle. Yeah, so. man. <laughs> um, okay, uh, before I do the rapid fire, yep. uh, 
So where do you want to send people? You have your so like drop your social. Yeah. Your website's not done yet. Do you no, know what the website's gonna be though. Um, I'll probably have it up here in a month or so. I was just waiting for a couple of these projects to finish up, so I had some good content for it. Yeah. Um. So the website will be soco-group.com. Okay, cool. The Insta is soco-group. My Insta is sir underscore Kurt. Um, mine is definitely my Insta is predominantly just like my life. I want it to be very separate of my business you know and that's that's honestly why i don't even like put my last name on like my social because I, I want the business to be separated you know yeah so yeah. and i think i think in the future i think it's probably going to blend a little bit more <laughs> yeah it might. like we'll see <laughs> <laughs> it might. um all right biggest challenge you've overcome in your own personal life what was that how'd you overcome it what'd you learn from it um oh man i uh I've, I've overcome some, some big stuff in my life. I definitely had a rough couple years, um, dealt with some serious depression, probably some 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 big mental health issues. And um, how, how'd you figure that out? How'd you get through? Just just perseverance, mental fortitude. You know, I think that for me, um, it it takes a lot for me to learn a lesson. So I almost had to be broken down to nothing, to, to literal like rock bottom before then I could start to build myself back up in the way that um, that I wanted or that I, you know, build myself to the person that I aspired to be. So, yeah. Um, what keeps you up at night now? <laughs> uh, just, honestly, clients and expectations keeps me up at night. Expectations from other people and then also for myself, you know. I you think seem like somebody who's like harder on yourself than anybody could ever be. For sure, for yeah. sure. I have a lot of definitely expectations. And and I think that's what broke me down years ago when I was in my early 20s was I, I didn't turn out to be the guy that I had dreamed of as a kid and as a, as a teenager and in college. It just didn't shape out for me. And then so I had all these expectations for myself and I didn't, I didn't turn out to be that guy. So it's like I beat myself up on it and went down a dark turn. So I think that's something that I've I've definitely had to wrestle with and just, yeah, set expectations for yourself, but you have to do something to get yourself there. You know, you yeah. can't just <laughs> blame it on all these external factors. I mean, you have to look yourself in the mirror and just, you know, get shit done. If you want to be that person, then you have to put the work in to go be that person. Yeah, no, 100%. Um if you had to choose one person, uh, there's been many, but pick one person that had a major impact on your life. Who was that person? What did they teach you? I would probably say the, uh, the as far as definitely business wise, the the guy who brought me into the industry, um, this gunslinger guy, yeah, quasi mentor, but not really yeah. guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, he was definitely just a very inspiring he a he he took risks with people you know he he kind of took a risk on me like maybe this guy will do well maybe he won't so you know he took a risk with me it turned out working you know working out well for him i learned a lot from him and his company but he was just a very inspiring person to watch um and see how he navigated through the multiple different industries that he was in i mean he just you know, and it was, he was really good with people too. I think that was the bedrock. What do you not like about him? Uh, <laughs> it's probably what I don't like about myself. He was very distracted uh, and, and he almost would spread himself um, thin and would have so many things going on that he, you know, wouldn't, you know, he'd get his people started on something and then yeah. he'd be like, all right, you're on your own, get it done. Because he would expect, because he knew if he was on his own, he'd figure out how to get it done. So it's like you either sink or swim type of deal. And a lot of people, I mean, shit, when I was there, we had so much turnover because, because, of, because people, of that. Yeah, yeah. People would sink. You know, he would just get people started on one of his projects, and then, you know, he would disappear and go start something else. <laughs> um, which is not great to be honest. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of positive in, the, in that attitude. It's funny, yeah. like how you if you can pull out the positive from that, yeah, like you'll be you'll be exceptional. But I think that like the one thing that he was probably uh, he was probably off on was the fact that if you don't own the business, you don't give a shit like the owner of the business. Yeah, you can't ever expect anybody who works in the business to be like an owner. Exactly. Yeah. They also like they, they don't care, and and yeah. they don't know what they don't know either. And That's I think true. I think he just ex expected people, and I do the same thing. I just expect people to be smart enough to to figure the fuck out. Like, yeah. <laughs> Which some people can. Yeah. But I mean, like, you got to be sure that like if you're gonna if you're gonna have the attitude like they you have to have somebody who can't figure it out. Yeah. And that's sometimes like if you if you over assume that they can. 
like you're kind of being a shitty leader because then you're just leaving them out and then, right yeah. right yeah yeah you're not helping them at all um if you had to pick your favorite source to learn from it could be a book podcast something you'd recommend people go check out. uh podcast for sure podcast um I started getting into uh, Jordan Peterson years ago on yeah. his books. However, his books are a bit heady to read. I find myself like having to stop on them. Well, but he's, he's a heavy dude. Yeah, he's, yeah, very, he's a very heavy, heavy dude. He's very, a smart dude. I like him a lot. Yeah, very intellectual. But his books, just the way they read sometimes are like very difficult. So his podcast, though, I enjoy listening to his podcast, um, the dialogue, the people that he brings on. And then I've got a few other guys that I've read. I like Andrew Clavin. It's one of yeah. my, that's one of my favorite podcasts, Andrew Clavin. Um just because his perspective on he was like a Hollywood scriptwriter, and then now he's um, just just the content and the way he is able to formulate his words and articulate his thoughts, I think are just great. And that's that's kind of how I aspire to be is like to be able to convey my message to people properly. You know, so I, I like listening to people who are good at that, like Jordan Peterson. Is probably the and best. Jordan at it. Peterson is like the, the goat at that. <laughs> yeah, he's like the most articulate person ever. Yes. Yeah, he's insane. Yeah. Um, if you had to tell your twenty-year-old self one thing, what would it be? Mm. Be a lot of things. I would tell my <laughs> twenty-year-old self. Um, it would probably be balance. I think that's what I struggled with. Uh, early on in life is balance in everything and to um, you know for any vice you might have you gotta you 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 got to outweigh that with some virtue so and I think that's where people you know go down the wrong path is um, you know they they start they don't they don't balance things out right I don't think I I don't know where I want to go with this Vice and virtue. We like talked about this a little bit earlier, <laughs> but um, gotta, we got a whole like, squad off. Yeah, right now. you can like you can like phone a friend. Like I don't give a shit. Like, you can throw answers in. Yeah, like. no, no, but yeah, honestly, yeah, balance though, and also, um, I was always a hard worker, but I think I, uh, in my early twenties, I think I resented that I had to work so hard. Right, I saw other people just just get stuff so easy. Right, but so it, I was not resent- always though. But you always, see it, you see it. Though. I would yeah, see you- it. So I was very resentful in my twenties. So I would probably just yeah tell myself to <laughs> drop that and also check your pride. That that's what killed me in my my early twenties too. Was my pride. I had uh, and when I checked my pride and and you know set my ego to the side, my life um, in every aspect as far as relationships, business wise, has exponentially you know improved yeah no good advice um last question what does success mean to you so and and like i watched your podcast so i was thinking about this honestly for a couple days trying to figure out what what does could have just copied an answer (laughs) (laughs) no because i was like what does success mean to me because i don't i don't view myself as that successful as a man i mean yeah sure maybe i built a business from nothing however i'm only like i said only now monetarily seeing success yeah. but i don't i don't really view uh money as a tool of success i think success for me is freedom of freedom of thought freedom of action knowing that every day when i wake up um uh, my life is mine i dictate what is going to happen that day where i'm taking my life and having the the freedom and the ability and the peace to be able to do that Thank <laughs> you.